am I in heaven? Am I hallucinating? Like, what's going on? And I look towards the left, and I see this even brighter light. And out of this brighter light comes out this man. And immediately I knew it was Jesus. And he walked towards me. And he sits on the chair right next to me. And I remember, I'll never forget at that moment, I thought, oh my God, Jesus is sitting right next to me. And I've had so many questions that I've wanted to ask him, but I've completely forgotten them all because I'm just in shock at the fact that Jesus is sitting right next to me. So my full name is uh, Freddy Fausto Ramirez. And Freddy, where are you from? Uh, so I was born in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, uh, but raised in Miami. And what testimony will you be sharing with us today? Oh man, so today I think I'm going to be sharing the, uh, just really the, the testimonies about the supernatural encounters that I've been having practically my entire life. Mm. Um, and that's something that I've been kind of keeping to myself for seven to eight years. I have a group of people around me that do know about it, but I haven't really been sharing it just because it's based on something that's very private and personal to me. Uh, but I've really been pushing, or I've really been feeling the Lord pushing me to share my testimony, begin to speak about it. So, mm. why do you feel you've been feeling that 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 tug to to share your testimony? Um, one of the things that I feel like God's been telling me is that number one, there's other people who are going through the same thing that you are. That you're not the only one. Because I remember when I was going through it, I thought I was the only one. I didn't know where to turn to, who to go to, who to speak to, what books to read. Um, I really just didn't know. I didn't hear anything like this, so I just kind of stayed quiet. Um, But I also really feel like God wants to manifest himself in a much stronger and tangible way to his people. And one of the things that I felt the Lord tell me is just, Freddie, I want you to begin to share your story because what I'm doing with you, I want to I want to begin to do to a whole generation. Wow. How old are you? I'm 33. Did you grow up in church? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. In fact, I always kind of jokingly say that I always hated the church. Mm. I've always hated the the Christian knees, as I would call it. The whole, I remember I used to go to church and, you know, um, when, I, when I would walk into service with my mom and I would hear people say, hey, brother, and I just didn't understand that. I, I would just kind of be confused and be like, why are you calling me brother? Yeah. <laughs> so, not, no, not at all. Did your parents grow up in religion or in church at all? I I would say my parents, more especially my mom, was probably a little more religious. But I would say kind of like it's more of a cultural thing, more of a Hispanic thing that you mm. just grow up Catholic. So, you just pray the rosary and go to Catholic church and... And do the whole Catholic lifestyle, whatever that was at the time. I really was not involved. Mm. So, so where does your story start? Uh, my story really begins when I was, I want to say, between maybe five years old around then. I was in the Dominican Republic, um, and my parents had gone out of town. And I'm staying with my grandma and my aunt. And I'm staying at their house, and one night, it's rainy and it's there's a heavy heavy thunderstorm and um the winds are just kind of like blowing the windows down it just almost feels like there's like a like a little tropical storm that was taking place and one of the things that i remember my aunt tells me to do is to go out and grab my dog and bring him inside and as i go out and i and i go look for my dog before i can even step into the backyard there's this huge flash of lightning that just strikes right in front of me. And it it was the closest, I think it was the closest I've ever been to seeing lightning like that before. But what was peculiar about this was the fact that in this lightning, there was a shadow of a group of soldiers that were standing in front of me. 
Um, and when I saw this, I, I freaked out. I'm a young kid. I don't really know what to do. So I just start screaming and I run back inside and I go to my aunt and I explain to her what I just saw. And she closes up all the doors. She closes up all the, the windows. And I run to my grandmother who's in the living room. And I explain to her what I just experienced. And I remember that when I looked into my grandmother's eyes, um, after I just finished explaining to her what just happened, uh, her eyes started to roll back. And she started whispering this name that I did not recognize. Now, I remember the name because I, w I was so traumatized that I remembered all the details. And I remember that she was whispering the name Santa Barbara, which later I found out was like one of the one of the saints in the Catholic Church. And she's whispering these things that I don't really understand, but I recognize that she's saying this name. And then she grabs my hand and she opens the front door. And as soon as she opens the front door, there's another flash of lightning that hits. But this time, there's a black shadow of a woman that is standing right in front of her. And at this point, I'm so freaked out that I ran into my grandmother's bedroom and I just hide under, under her bed. And I don't really want to talk to anyone at that point. Um, and that's, that's really kind of where it begins. Um, and I really didn't know how to explain like what just happened. Like I just kept that to myself. I told my grandma and my aunt, but they didn't really have any words to explain for it either. So I just, I just kept it to myself because I didn't really know who to tell. And I thought, well, okay, well, if I just forget about it, then it will just disappear. Uh, but as I started growing older, those kind of supernatural encounters or occurrences started becoming a little more common, uh, where sometimes I would have demons that would visit me, and sometimes I would have angels that would come and visit me. I would have many nights as a, ch as a child where I would have sleep paralysis, where it was practically I would just go to sleep wake up in the middle of the night, see something in front of me and not have the ability to move. And the sad part about this was that this was just normal for me. This became my every night routine where there would be times where I just knew, okay, I'm about to go to sleep. I really wish I didn't have to go to sleep but I'm about to experience another attack. Could you share some of those, uh, maybe one or two uh, encounters that you had as a little kid at night? Yeah, I remember that um, it would happen every so couple of months where it, there would be like a two-week period where it was almost like a TV show. Like Monday was the first episode, Tuesday was the next episode. It was just a continuation. And what would happen is that I would wake up in the middle of a field and I would see this tall man wearing a jacket uh, and his face was completely disfigured. And he would call my name and he would just laugh as he was just calling my name and he would begin to chase me. And the entire dream was him practically just chasing me. I would run to a forest and he would find me there. Or I would run inside a house and try to hide and he would still find me there. And I would wake up and think that the dream was over, but by this time I knew that it wasn't because then the sleep paralysis would take place. And I, my eyes would, 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 would open, but the rest of my body would not respond. And I would see different creatures either walking around my bed or even standing on my chest, or just staring at me, or trying to intimidate me. And I would do my best to just scream and scream. And there would be times, too, where my sister 
you know, I, I, had, I have a younger sister who used to share a bedroom together and in her separate bed. Sometimes she would wake up screaming because she said that she would see creatures around my bed. And my parents would walk in and try to find and find something, thinking that maybe someone came in and there was nobody there. Um, and so, so yeah. How long did that that go for? That was like your entire childhood, essentially, or that was that was back and forth. That wasn't every single day, but that pra practically lasted after that first encounter. Um, but there would be other times where it wasn't always dark. There were other times where it was also angelic as well, where um, I would have visions of Jesus. I would have visions of angels, and I really didn't understand what I was seeing. Um, I remember at one point when I was eight years old, I was already living in Miami, and I was, you know, just being a kid, I was playing my Game Boy at the time. That kind of dates me. Uh, but <laughs> I was playing my Game Boy, and I was facing the wall, laying on my bed, and I see a shadow of a man just coming and standing behind me. And I look up because I see the shadow. And I say, hey, Dad, what do you need? Thinking that that's my father standing behind me. And I keep looking. And I notice that he doesn't respond. And then all of a sudden, I see these angel wings that just open up and begin to spread. And at this point, I've kind of been used to seeing things like this. So I am nervous, I am scared, but I also fr freeze and just stay silent and calm. And I do my best just to stay calm at that moment. So I just kind of like look down and just kind of wait for it to leave. And I remember I look back up again and it was gone. And so I go into my parents' bedroom to see if like, if it was truly them. Because when I turn around, nobody was there. And so I go into my parents' bedroom, and my mom is there, my dad is there, my sisters, they're all watching TV. They're all having a good time. And I look at my dad, I'm like, Dad, were you in my room just now? And he's looking at me like, no, I've been here this entire time. But I just kept it to myself, because what am I, what do you do? Like, what do you, how do you respond at that moment? Um... And so I just continue to experience that. And I want to say that although as I started to get older, um, although those demonic dreams and attacks and appearances continue to happen, there was an increase of the angelic around me as well. Mm. So how did your story develop from, from those encounters? Um it's, it continued on to my teenage years, uh, but it really started to take a much stronger hold when I first attended church. Um, I felt like for some time God was calling me. My mom would go to Catholic services, um, and sometimes she would take me. And, you know, to this day, I never even told her this, but there would be some times where I would just go in the back because... I would just start crying and I didn't know why I was crying. I mean, I was just, just tears were just streaming down my face and I would feel this peace and I would feel this love, but I didn't really understand what was happening. And this was happening to me inside of a Catholic church. No one else was crying. No one else was singing. This was just, this were just moments that would overwhelm me. Um, but the first time I want to say that it really started to develop was when I started going to a Christian church. I remember I went to my one of my very first services. And as soon as I walked in, they were in the middle of worship. And again, the tears began to fall down my face. And mind you, my friends at the time used to call me the robot because I had no emotions whatsoever. Like I remember my grandma had died previously before and I just didn't cry because I just didn't have any emotions in me. But for some reason, I would cry every time I felt what I know now is the presence of God. And I'll never forget, I felt such peace and such love that I just ended up staying the entire service. I didn't understand what the pastor was speaking, but I just knew that I was feeling this peace. And then something interesting happened. Towards the end of the service, uh, the pastor or the youth pastor at the time, because it was a youth service, he makes this call 
And he says, hey, uh, there's a prophetic word that one of our prophets released over the youth. So we're going to play the audio. And I just want you guys to come to the front and receive it. And so I see everybody just standing up and just going to the front. And mind you, I'm new. Never been to church before. Uh, but I just get up just because I see everybody else. So I'm just following the crowd at this point. And I remember at this point that I get up. I'm standing near the front and they start playing this audio of this prophetic word. And there's this, there's this voice of a man saying something in the, in the, in the likes of that God is lifting up a new generation to really impact his people. And he's putting a ball of fire inside of your hands to minister to the next generation. And so I remember that as this was being said, I closed my eyes and I lifted my hands because I see everybody else doing it. And as I'm hearing those words and God is putting a ball of fire on your hand, my eyes open, but even though I had them closed, like my, my, my physical eyes are closed, but somehow I'm seeing. And, I, and I'm seeing myself opening my eyes and I look into my hands and I see a ball of fire on my hand and I immediately open my eyes and I start shaking it out because I'm thinking that my hand caught on fire somehow and when I open my eyes I see there's no fire there's no there's no one sparking anything on my hand no one's playing a prank on me what just happened to me and I kid you not I I was just flabbergasted for the entire length of the service. I remember walking out just in complete shock, trying to explain what just happened. I couldn't really explain anything to me. I, I couldn't really explain what was happening at that time. All I knew was that whatever this God was, Whatever it is that he was doing, he was calling me. And I felt his love and I felt his peace. And I wanted more. I really, I just, I remember at the time, I just, I felt such immense love that I've never felt before. And I just really, really wanted more. And I went to every service. I went to every prayer service. Anytime the church was open, I was there just because I wanted to experience this peace and this love that was happening. And so I remember even back in high school, I remember that they used to have morning prayers. And I would go. I didn't know how to pray. I really didn't know what to expect. But I just knew that at any chance that I had to continue to experience God, I wanted it. And so that's when it really, I think, it started taking a turn to the next level. Because I remember one morning I got up, it was 5 a.m. In the, in, the, in the morning. And I put my backpack together and I go to the church and I'm walking inside the temple. I'm walking inside the sanctuary and it's dark and there's people praying in the front. And I notice that everyone's like in the front area and I'm in the back. So I'm walking towards the front. And as I'm walking towards the front, I see out of nowhere this like flash of lightning appear. Like just quick flash of lightning in the middle of darkness. And I see this very tall man wearing a white robe. He's so tall that I can only see up to his shoulder blade right here. And he's walking so fast towards me that I think he's about to knock me over. He just doesn't see me. And as he's approaching me, I'm getting ready to just jump out of the way because he's walking so fast. But before I can even jump, he walks right through me. And I turn around. And I see him just disappear. And again, I'm in this moment of like, what just happened to me? And I remember I just, I go to the morning prayer session where they're having and I just sit at the front. And at this point, I'm not even praying. I don't join in the circle. I don't, 
I'm really not even interested in prayer. I'm just trying to process what just happened to me. And after prayer is over, I remember that I recognized one of the leaders that I had met at the time. And I asked, I asked him, listen, I, I need to talk to you. I've been having all of these experiences and I just had this that just happened to me. Can you explain to me what just happened? And I remember he gets so excited. He's just like, oh my God, Freddie, like that was Jesus. And I'm like, who? Like, Jesus? Like, like God, like the guy that went to the cross, like he was here? Like, yeah, that was Jesus. He just, he just, he's grabbing a hold of you. He's calling you. And I'm just like, what does he want? <laughs> like, okay. At this point, I'm, I'm accepting it. But I'm wondering, like, why? Like, why me? Like, I don't, I just started going to church. I don't really understand what's going on. Don't really understand the Bible yet. All I know is that Jesus is after me. With your family, you obviously had some um, interactions early on. Have you been able to figure out what was happening with them and, and with all of these experiences that you were having in, in the home? Have you been able to put language to it for them? Have you had that conversation with them? And very recently, I just started, and when I say recently, I want to say maybe within the last two, three years, is when I've kind of been opening up and telling them like, hey, this is what happened to me when I was younger. And I had a conversation, I want to say this year, with my sister. Because there would be moments where she would wake up uh, at night screaming because she would see something dark or she would see something light. Um, and there was no, you know, you would think, well, maybe we would have family members who are involved in witchcraft or santeria, which is popular in the Hispanic world, but that we know of, there wasn't necessarily any of that connection to our family that we are aware of. Could it have been? Possibly, but not that we know of. So it, it, it felt random. It felt like there's really no reason for it, but... I think as I started growing older and I started maturing in my relationship with God and just kind of gaining understanding, I feel like I started to understand that this was just really God calling me. God had placed a call in my life uh, to be able to experience Him and to teach others to experience Him as well. But also when you're called by God, the devil also wants to distract you and destroy you as well. He wants to do the very opposite. And so that's why I believe that today there's many people who are mediums and they're psychics and they have a gift to see. They have a gift to be able to hear in the spirit realm. But they're prophets who the devil has confused and turned around so that he can use them for his purposes instead of the original intent which is to be used by God. So as you begin to go to church and you started to realize that God had this call upon your life and he was coming yeah. after you, how, how did that transition from, okay, just these random experiences to now, okay, I'm going to intentionally seek after God. What was that transition like or what did it look like afterwards now walking with God? It was really difficult. I'll be honest with you. Because there wasn't really anyone that I could go to at the time. I didn't know who to go to. Um, I didn't know if there was a number to call or a book to read. You know, how do you, how do you, how do you figure out what is happening? All that I knew was happening. This was that it was beginning to intensify. And as I started going to church, these experiences started intensifying. Now the good thing was that it. The good thing started to intensify. And the demonic started to become less and less. Um, so I started to experience more of God. I started to see more angels. Um, I remember I would, you know, I, I was just recently taught how to pray. And so I would do what we were always taught to do is lock ourselves in a room and put some worship on. And I would do that. 
and I would see angels appear. And there were moments that my mom could tell you that I would be in prayer and I would run out of my room screaming. Because can you, can you describe yes. what you would see? Of, you know, an angel. Like, wh- what did that look like? So there, there were moments where I would just be in prayer, and I had my eyes closed, and I was just singing. You know, the song that I was that was on that I had put on, and <laughs> I remember I would open my eyes, and I would see like these white lights light beans it's almost like if they're like human form but they're white lights just floating around my room and i would even hear them sometimes sing along with me like audibly hear them not like in my mind i would audibly hear them sing along with me and i didn't know how to react to that so i would just the first thing i did was not like oh holy 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 the first thing i did was just like grab the door open it and run and just get the heck out of there um and my mom would just ask me like are you okay what's going on and it was just like mom something's in my room i don't know what it is and my mom at that point was just like Freddy, i think you're experiencing angels and i was just like is that what that is um and that continued to increase as i started going to church and learning more and eventually i started getting involved and i started getting involved in leadership and I started opening up because they started to increase. And I had a very difficult moment because I would open up to some leaders and some leaders would tell me, well, maybe you're demon possessed. And I believed it. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I am. I guess I do have demons inside of me. Maybe this is why I'm seeing this. Well, God, if these are demons, Please, like, by all means, remove remove them from my life. Like, free me from this. But he wouldn't. And I really wanted to be fine. I wanted to be normal. I wanted to please the leaders. And so I just stopped praying. Because I just came to a point where it's just like, well, if they won't stop coming to the times where I come in prayer, then... I'll stop giving them the opportunity to come and see me. So I just, for a moment, I just stopped praying. And I just read my Bible a little bit, kind of still a little scared if something was going to pop out. And just kind of waiting for God to free me. Until one day, I remember that I was in church. And by this time, I already had felt, I didn't know the voice of God yet fully. Like, God was starting to speak to me, but I wasn't able to really recognize it yet as the voice of God. But at the time, I remember I kept on hearing, don't ignore me. This is me. I'm looking for you. Don't shut me out. But I kept doing the opposite. I kept shutting him out. I kept closing the door. I kept ignoring him because I thought this was demonic. And I remember one time I was in church. And I kept on hearing the voice get louder and louder and louder until I just started hearing this voice scream at me. Do not ignore me. Do not ignore me. And I ran out of the service because I just started crying at that moment instantly. People were looking at me. By that time, I was already a leader, so I felt so embarrassed so I ran out. I remember the ushers were like, wait, are you okay? And I just, I didn't want to see anybody. And thankfully at that time, there was someone, there was a leader um, that was able to guide me. And she flowed very strongly in the prophetic. And I just ran up to her and I'm like, could you please pray for me? <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on with me. And she saw me crying. She's like, Freddie, what's, what's happening? Why are you crying like this? And I just looked at her, I'm like, I don't know. And she just paused for a moment. And she said, Freddie, you're ignoring God. Oh my God. That was God speaking to me. That voice that I thought maybe was a demon was actually God speaking to me. And that changed my life at that point. That changed my approach. At that point, I began to embrace it. I knew, okay, this is God. 
he wants to show himself to me. Well, this is what I want. And I remember I made a prayer at that point, which was like, God, like, if I'm going to give you my life and this is what you want from me, I embrace it and I want it. Like, I want to be able to experience you. I want to feel you tangibly. Like, however close you want to be, I'm all in, God. So how did that uh, move forward? Did, did God begin to, what did he begin to show you afterwards? I think the moment that I accepted that this was God, uh, it just continued to get stronger. But this time, uh, my relationship with God was growing. I was embracing the encounters that I was having. And it's not that this was all my focus was just for me to just to experience something. But it was just the idea that God was reaching out to me and that he loved me and that he wanted to develop a strong relationship with me. Um, and... I remember there came a point where my nightmares stopped because God, I started to embrace the voice of God and God began to tell me, before you go to sleep, command any demonic spirit that is haunting you to stop, rebuke it, and put my angels to watch over you. I tell you, I did that one time. And since that day, I've never had another nightmare. I've never had another sleep paralysis or any demonic attack at night ever again since I made that one prayer. After that, it just started to increase in the angelic. And um, I think one of my most beautiful moments immediately after that was another morning prayer session that I had. This was in my, in, in my home. And I got up to pray. And as I was praying, I remember that I opened my eyes for a moment. I was sitting in a chair and the whole room started changing. It, it's it's a really weird way to try to describe this, but the whole room began to change. It, it was almost like slowly, like as I'm looking at you right now, slowly everything that was around me was beginning to change, even the, the ground under my feet. And I saw this beautiful light coming in and, I was now in this forest and it continued to change and change and change and change. And it reached to a certain point where I could still see, for the sake of explanation, I could still see the earth. Like I could still see the rest of my living room. Um, but I was in this forest with this beautiful light. And I was looking into my room. I was looking into the living room that I was in. And realizing, like, wait, where am I right now? Like, am I in heaven? Am I hallucinating? Like, what's going on? And I look towards the left, and I see this even brighter light. And out of this brighter light comes out this man. And immediately I knew it was Jesus. And he walked towards me. And he sits on the chair right next to me. And I remember, I'll never forget, at that moment, I thought, oh my God, Jesus is sitting right next to me. And I've had so many questions that I've wanted to ask him, but I've completely forgotten them all <laughs> because I'm just in shock at the fact that Jesus is sitting right next to me. And I just look at him and I just stare with him and I'm like, I, I, I wish I knew what to say. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. What about him? What about his presence? How did you know this is Jesus? It was an instant knowing. It was just like this instant knowing that there was like, there was no doubt that this was Jesus. Like, like it was, like, I was more assured that this was Jesus than who I am. Was it because of, of what he looked like, or it, was it something, an emotion he stirred in you? It, it, it was kind of a little bit of everything. It was, it, it was just the presence that he carried. The best way that I can describe it was just this immense majesty. Like, just looking at him made me want to worship him. 
it, it was like it was just like my body's or my souls or my uh, just just my reaction i just wanted to worship him immediately i just felt this majesty about him but i also felt this strong love and friendship at the same time it, it's not like when you meet a president where you're just like you're you're in reverence to him and but you kind of, you kind of hold back because you want to be respectful. It was almost like, yes, I, there's the King of Kings, and I want to worship. I want to be reverent to him. But like, he's so loving and so friendly, and he's so down to earth. Like, you could just feel like you could just talk to him. And he, I, I was nervous at the moment, but he put me at ease very quickly. And he just sat me down and he just smiled at me. And that smile spoke volumes that words could never describe. Like that smile put me at such ease and calmness. And we had, to me, what it felt like an hour-long conversation. And I remember Jesus just kind of stood there. He's just like, you have questions? Ask me. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And now this is this is not a, a dream. This this is, is not. No, I am awake. Uh, this is not me like sleeping. Yeah. This is I am awake. I'm seeing this as I am seeing you. This is not a vision where I had or my imagination. Right. This this is real. And and before you even move on to the to the conversation, I would love for you to share a little bit more about that. What what did he look like? Could you share? how like his what he looked like what i can't describe that he he was tall he was definitely definitely tall um and he was definitely not white skinned like light skinned kind of how like the many people kind of portray him to be i did see him have a little bit of long hair and i saw beard uh but his there's there's a couple features that I feel like he allowed me to see and others that were blurry in, in this vision. But one thing that I did see that I focused so much on was his eyes. He had the most beautiful blue eyes that I have ever seen in my life. But it's not the fact that it was just blue. It's like when I looked into his eyes, I could see the ocean. It's the weirdest thing. It's just like I there was so there was so much depthness into his eyes that you could literally stare into his eyes and see the ocean, see like the deepness, unlimited deepness of God. And it was alive. Like like his eyes were alive. Like they would share and tell a story. Wow. What did that conversation, I mean, whatever you can share, right, about that conversation, what did you ask? What did he tell you? How did that go? Yeah, so I began to ask him. I was just like, the first thing was just like, God, like, thank you so much for for coming and talking with me. But what do you want? <laughs> like, like, why did you choose me? And he began to explain to me a lot of things that I was beginning to experience. Why I experienced a lot of things that I experienced since I was a child. And it's because he had chosen me. He wanted me to serve in ministry. Mind you, I never wanted to be in ministry. I never liked church. I never asked to be part of a church. And I remember the first time I came to God and I felt his presence in a service. I told God, God, okay. I'll give my life to you, but just don't ever make me a minister. Don't make me a pastor. I don't want any of that. But he began to explain to me that this is what he had called me to do. And so I started asking him more specific details of like, well, what does that look like? What is it that you want me to do? And he started he started explaining to me things that I did not understand. I remembered and I wrote it down afterwards. Uh, but I did not understand. There were certain words and terminology that he was using at that time that were brand new to me. And I remember even afterwards when I would be around other Christians, they would say certain Christian words. 
And I'll be like, wait, 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 wait. What, what did you just say? Can you repeat that again? Like, yeah, yeah, th this, this is what this means. And it's just like, what does that mean? Because I've heard that before. And I didn't tell him where I heard it before. Uh, so I began to really ask him about, like, if you have this call for me, what is that call? What is it that you want me to do? What, what, what do you want me to do now? But the main thing that I, I, I'm open to share now is just, I remember telling him, God, if I'm going to really do this for you, only thing I ask is that you don't take this away from me. Like, I'll continue to do this if, if we can keep this. I, I never want to come to a point where I don't experience you like this in any way because there's, let me tell you, there's nothing like it. Like, it's one thing when you go to church and you pray and you worship and it's beautiful, but there's nothing like it. There's nothing like experiencing God for yourself on a personal level. So I remember after the conversation, um, he just got up and said, well, I have to go. And I'm like, why? <laughs> All right, what well, time is it? Well, <laughs> it's like, where are you going? <laughs> like, why? Why can't you stay? And I remember... Well, b before you move on from there, really quick, what was his response to you saying, I want to continue to experience this? <sighs> he laughed. But it was it was a it wasn't like a laughter of like oh you're kidding me like yeah right you're never gonna get this it was more of like I'm really happy that you asked me this I'm really he was really pleased with that request um and and after after that after he got up I asked him where it was it that he was going and. He just told me I have to go, but I told him like, will we continue this? <laughs> will, will, will we continue to have moments like this? And he told me, I'm going to teach you how. And I didn't, at the moment, I had no idea what he meant, but I just trusted him. There was just something about him that I'm just like, okay. Jesus said that we're going to continue this. We're going to continue this. And, but the most beautiful thing happened too, it was really interesting. When he got up and he began to walk away, the entire scenery began to change back wow. into where I was again. So as he was walking away and leaving, like it was like heaven was starting to fade away. And when he walked into a light, then it just closed up and it became my living room again. And that just stirred a fire in me. I remember I, I called my dad. And I'm like, Dad, you'll never guess who I just spoke to. <laughs> I woke him up. <laughs> I'm like, I just spoke with Jesus. And it was just like, oh, that's great. So I'm like, no, 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 no. You, you don't understand. Like, like, I had a whole conversation with Jesus physically. Like, I sat with him. I saw him. And he just began to ask me about it, and we had a great time. But something began to stir even more after that encounter. At that time, I was already a leader, and I was discipling others. And I had a strong, strong desire for prayer. I, I just grew a passion for prayer. But not just praying just to pray. Like, for me, prayer changed. Like, after my experiences, my definition, my perspective of prayer became completely different. I no longer saw prayer as like, oh, I'm just talking to God. Or how I used to see it, if I could be honest with you, I'm just talking to thin air. I I'm just talking, hoping that I get some sort of response or answer. Now, my perspective was... Man, when I get into the presence of God, it's literal heaven on earth. It, it, I, I have the opportunity to create that atmosphere for God to manifest himself and draw close to me. So 
with the people that I began to lead at the time, I remember I started having vigils, or what we used to call vigils, were practically all night prayer meetings. And we were we were young teenagers in our 18s, 19, you know, early 20s. And we would have Friday night service. And then after Friday night service, go into somebody's room. And there would be like 16 of us that would pray from like midnight all the way to 6 a.m. in the morning almost every single night. But what deeply impacted me about those meetings and about those those vigils that we were having is that they also began to experience the same thing that I started to experience. In those meetings, we had so many manifestations. There were angels that were appearing, but they began to see it too. These were people that have never seen anything. Many of them were even new to the faith. And they started experiencing encounters as well. Till this day, they, there are many of them who are pastors, who, are, who live in different countries, and still continue to experience encounters today because of those prayer vigils that we've had before in the past. Freddie, what is, what is God teaching you now, today? What is He calling you to do um, for these next next couple of moments, next couple of years, what what is the mission? To be honest with you, that was a fight because just early this year, I heard God tell me, "I want you to begin to share your story," and I didn't want to. Number one, because it was very private; it was very personal to me. I was okay with sharing it with people that I knew, and they started experiencing this as well. So I was really happy about that, but. I didn't really want to come out publicly with these stories. Number one, because it was private, but secondly, also because there's just some really crazy people out there. And you also, when you begin to share your story like this, you you open yourself up for criticism. You open yourself up for people saying comments or saying some really rude, nasty things about you. And I just... I didn't need to go. I just didn't feel the need to go through that. Like, I, like I'm fine with my experiences on my own. <laughs> you know, I didn't feel like I needed to share. But God started telling me, Freddie, I want you to begin to share your story. Because the same way that I encountered you, I want to encounter others. And the Lord really started teaching me that that is the mission that He's placed in my life. Is to really lead people to encounter God. And it's not it's not about coming to a meeting or receiving prayers so that you can start seeing angels or so that you can start receiving gold dust and all these things. But it's about drawing close to Jesus. That's what this really is all about. Because I believe that God really does want to bring heaven on earth. But we can't have heaven on earth if we don't experience him like if we are in heaven. Um, And so it's really now just beginning to share my story through my testimony. I'm preparing to write a book and, and I really want to lead others into encounter. And to be honest with you, I can't do it. I don't have any magic powers to open up the heavens or to do or replicate any of the experiences that I've had. But I do it knowing that this is the mission that he's called me to do it. And if he's called me to do it, he's going to do it. Mm. To anybody that's watching right now and is hearing your testimony, hearing your encounters with Jesus, with heavenly uh, presence, and they want to encounter that, what, what can you say to that person watching man if you're watching and you just you're hungry for god's presence the first thing i want to encourage you is just, just to really continue to seek him like ask god to give you a passion for him the thing is that we first have to understand is that we can't be hungry for god hunger is a gift from god And those encounters are a gift from God. We ourselves don't have the ability in our human form 
and our human flesh to be able to see God the way that he wants us to. We need to cry out to him and ask him, God, expose me. Put that hunger in me. And the next thing that I would say is just find people that have had those encounters because it's tangible. It spreads. This is not a private matter. This is not something that Jesus wants to keep to himself. I, I so strongly believe this because this is something that God has spoken to me. And I believe this is my mission in life. I believe that we are coming to the day where every believer is going to come to the point where they will experience God in a tangible way. It may not look like the way that I experience God, but you will have an experience with God if you so desire it.